Hi, and welcome to the IT Chronicles. I'm Kirsty McGowan, and we're coming to you from the Gartner Data Centre show in Las Vegas. I'm here with my co-host, Carlos Casanova. Hello, Kirsty. And we're speaking with Chris Gettle from Landesk. Hi, Chris. Hi, great to be here, thanks. Hey, Chris. So, Chris, you know, we've you know, seen each other at different shows over the, mm -hmm. over the years and whatnot, and Landesk, obviously, you know, we've uh, done a lot of work with Landesk. But this is a little different. You know, the Gartner event, it's a data center event, it's not a service management event. Right. And you know, I know you switched um, sort of roles recently, you know, more into the security space, which is obviously you know a, a big issue now. With you know, especially with the whole private cloud, public mm -hmm. cloud, and all that sort of thing. Right. So, you know, Landesk in particular, I mean, you're kind of sitting in a space. How do you enable that? How do you secure? How do you convince you know your clients that you can do continue doing this and not uh, become more vulnerable? Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, in today's world, we're, we're dealing with a lot of security threats. Yes. You can't really look at the news without seeing yep. yet another breach or a new type of yep. ransomware or something else along mm -hmm. those lines. So um, it's a natural um, you know, change of conversation mm -hmm. with our customers. Uh, what we try to um, you know, make sure we're doing well is we're trying to enable our customers to not only put the right security controls in place, but also to take it to a point where security becomes a cultural change and a discipline yep. within IT, but also within the rest of the company. IT can't do this alone, so it really needs to be a, an all or nothing effort. Everybody's in, or it's gonna be a, an ultimate uh, struggle to try to secure your environment. Right, and it seems like just that classic, you know, weakest link kind of situation. Mm -hmm. you know, that's where a lot of the breaches that we've heard of over the, you know, the last year or two, right. it's through the old school, you know, email, phishing, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. Um, so yeah, absolutely, and getting everyone, you know, to yeah. buy into that. Yeah, and you, I mean, you're dealing with an increasingly fearful public who, right. who want to know that the companies they're dealing with have security at the, at the front of their minds at all times. So. Right. I guess that's, uh, that's a challenge. It is. Um, yeah, it's actually one of the sessions that I went to this week, uh, Neil's session on uh, um, cloud security was yep. uh, quite good. Uh, resonated well with a lot of the, the things that we're trying to do as well. Yep. Um, it was interesting to see some of his conversation saying, you know, hey, for the, for the data center, especially for your servers, things like traditional AV are not the security mm -hmm. controls you need. In fact, there's some companies that aren't even running AV on their servers anymore. Right. What, what yeah. you do need to make sure of is that you're plugging um, you know, software vulnerabilities, that you're configuring mm -hmm. servers with the proper rights, that you're limiting permissions so that the wrong people <clears throat> can't get on them and run things. And actually, one of the things, that probably the best feature he said to implement on your servers is proper application control. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's so weird. I, mean, I, you know, I spent years in, in the security space, and I remember some of the stuff that we did, you know, the basics. You know, and, and, <laughs> And there are some changes now, you know, because you, you kind of have to assume you will be breached, right. you know, th to some depth. Yeah. So you have to have the, you know, the, still the perimeter, typical castle model, uh, but your resilience and vigilance is kind of where I say those are the two elements that we don't always do. But, but you know, like you said, you just pointed out, <coughs> audit verify, yeah, okay, fine. But it's, it is so much more than that. You know, there's so many more important pieces that, need to come into play and everyone has to has to really adopt that right. um, so you know how do you work you know how do you work with your clients to yeah. convince them that you know that, that's gonna be a challenge yeah um, the the one good thing is there's there's plenty of evidence for for needing to do these things um, so one of the things that I do on a regular basis is uh, I host a, a monthly patch Tuesday webinar right. uh, within our security group uh, yeah. at uh, Landesk um, it's actually under uh, one of our sub brands Shablik. Um, so some people uh, who are watching have probably seen that webinar before, but what we try to do is we try to go through all the things that are coming out, but we also touch on <clears throat> not just, uh, hey, this patch is going to update Windows, it's going to affect the kernel, it's going to affect you know, this or that. We actually get into more of um, what are the vulnerabilities being plugged here? What are they actually, how would an attacker target them? Right. So things like saying this bulletin resolves a vulnerability that could target a user. Um, right there, you've now got one of the most important attack vectors in the attacker's arsenal. If yeah. I've got 10 email addresses for the company that I want to get into, and I craft a, a, a phishing scam to, to get in there, um, I've got almost a 90% chance of getting in there. Wow. The percentages of people who are easily convinced to click on and open an attachment like that, it's it? astounding. I mean, and, it's and, and, really frightening. And, and, if we ever yeah. told them, hey, yeah. don't click mm -hmm. on anything, right? Because we've never told yeah. them that. You know? Yeah. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. So even within our own mm -hmm. company, we've got uh, our security team regularly does um, you know phishing campaigns where um, just uh, you know they'll send out different emails crafted different ways. Yeah. And uh, actually, just a week ago, one of our um, DevOps team 
uh, saw one of these emails, immediately said, oh, hey, this isn't, this isn't uh, legit, this is mm -hmm. something bad. He sent out an email shortly yep. after to large portions of the company mm -hmm. saying, if you're seeing this, you know, report it right yep. away, delete it. Um, and actually, yeah. by, by like a, an hour <laughs> later, our security team yeah. was saying, you know, props, good job, guys. This is yeah. exactly what we want to see. It was, we want to yeah. Yeah. it was a perfect example of how making it a cultural yep. change, yes. you start to see the, the people within your organization pull together and identify those. Yeah. Now, the reason we point out things like a user-targeted threat, it resides within software, predominantly on mm -hmm. the workstation side, the endpoint side. <clears throat> now, in the data center, we're not as concerned about that, but... Um, if we haven't properly segmented our network, if we haven't put the right defenses in place to make sure that a user exploited over here couldn't allow the attacker to gain access right. to something in the industry, that's how, that's how they get in there. Right. They're going to spend weeks to months slowly working their way through and finding the next place they can go to until they get to that payout on a yeah. server in my critical mm -hmm. environment. Right. That's yeah, what, and I mean, yeah. you, you remember from the New Zealand conference and yes. I did the keynote down there on the security and the uh, yeah. intersection with config and uh, Matt Loeb from, uh, from ISACA, it's 200, I think, 37 days yeah, I was just gonna before say it's that. detected. Yeah. Yeah. And that's crazy, and it's the yeah. elevating credentials. Yes. It's yeah. walking in, it's breaching mm -hmm. the, you know, the company you're mm -hmm. about to acquire, which is a small yep. mom and pop. Yep. They get in, they sit, and that's what's scary, you know, from a security perspective, that's yep. what's the most scary is, it's not the smash and grab anymore. No. no it's, it's, hey, I'm gonna sit for six months, maybe nine, yeah. I don't care. It's yeah. That, yeah, that very, this sneaking in and just yeah. sitting and waiting. Yeah, to, so for the right opportunity. When the the endpoint conversation, I mean, obviously we've got ransomware and other yeah, things sure. that are like, mm -hmm. oh, I can get quick payouts, yeah. I can get yeah. easy, and you know, uh, un unless it's like San Francisco and the Muni, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> then that doesn't that really was, work out. <laughs> exactly. That was that was yeah. actually a nice flip on ransomware, yeah. they, where they we're taking to, have to yes. a, a mm. grander scale, yeah. Yeah. and again, that hit more of the mm. server side. Yeah. But sure. and, and they got hacked afterwards. I don't know if you mm. saw that. The hacker who did the hacking got hacked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hacked, yeah. Um, I did. I did catch that. Yeah, yeah. that was funny. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. a little it's karma. It's good to see the white hats uh, fighting back a little. And bit. And I think that's honestly yeah. what it is, right? Mm. You know, that's kind of going. That's probably another whole mm. discussion. But you know, the gray, the white, the black. Right. I think that's where, in what I believe mm. is, organizations have to start taking on the white hats more. Yeah. They have to bring them in and go out. And it sounds like you guys are doing it even internally, testing your own people. To yeah. see how that's playing out. Uh, we're actually we're uh, we're going to be having a lot of fun with um, our internal security team yeah. later this year at um, our own show and a few other events where. Right. Well, don't tip everyone do, off. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to do we're going to do a live hacking yeah. session where we're I'm going to be walking through. A, here's how you know yeah. we would uh, you know um, defend this and yeah. you know we'd basically have him trying to attack and then mm. seeing each of our security controls put in place right. and oh, that's cool. going mm. back and forth and watching that and they, they the security guys eat it up. Oh, yeah. yeah. So sure. bringing Absolutely. them into the conversations yeah. is actually one of the best Better things that um, my team has done to really engage with them and build our overall culture. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Well. So, well, thanks for coming. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm looking forward. I mean, I'm actually really curious to hear the results of that because that, yeah. that sounds like that could would be really, really cool. It'll be, it'll be good to get you back and have a chat about that once you've done it and Not see just what the results <laughs> were. If it doesn't go well, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe it won't go well. Yeah. Yeah. But th thanks for yeah. coming, Steve. Thank yeah, you. Thanks.